Today is Wednesday, May 15. I'm Pastor Anthony, and this is Wilderness Wanderings. Today our text comes from 2 Peter. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control. It's 2 Peter 1, verses 5, and the first part of verse 6. Self-control is one of the few virtues in Peter's list that lines up with Paul's fruit of the Spirit. It is undoubtedly a good gift of God, but it can be a double-edged sword. There is a self-control, which is the achievement of our own control, and there is a self-control that arises from a surrender to God's control. Much like our discussion of knowledge yesterday, The danger is that self-control can puff up our pride and self-righteousness rather than build up others in love. If this is the case, then we've gone wrong somewhere. This list of virtues demands a grounding in faith that moves toward love, not self-righteousness. So when self-control is that first thing, our own achievement, We might find ourselves looking down on lesser Christians or people in society who can't seem to get it together. Having learned to master our own desires and impulses, we can grow impatient and graceless with those who continue to stumble. We view ourselves as strong Christians who have figured out the discipline of a moral and productive life, a vantage point from which others look weak and in need of improvement. This prideful sense of control can spread from control of self to a desire to either control others or to remove them from the well-controlled space of our church or community. As Paul reminds us, self-control is not an achievement, though. It is a gift of the Spirit, a fruit born in the Christian life that is produced in us by the Spirit when we surrender to it. The list that Peter gives brings even more definition. The self-control he speaks of arises from the ground of faith in Jesus, who has given us every good gift, calling, and promise. This kind of self-control that submits to the gifts and lordship of Christ culminates in a life of love. Self-control as a gift of God that rests on faith and arrives at love cannot be the sort that produces pride or a controlling or diminishing attitude toward others. Now, All that said, the word for self-control that Peter uses does speak of a sort of lordship or dominion over something. In the Greek philosophers of the day, including in Aristotle, this virtue is one of the most important. Yet it only shows up rarely in the New Testament. The reason? Well, that's because there is only one Lord who holds dominion over our lives, and it isn't us. Self-control as a Christian virtue is not an exercise of our own lordship over our own lives. It is a submission of our lives to the lordship of Christ. Furthermore, whereas in the Greek philosophers self-control often entailed a rejection of the material creation and all desire for it, the Christian exercise of self-control is different. The lord of our lives asks not that we reject his creation or the desires he created us with, but instead that we submit these desires and our use of the creation to him. What he asks is that we observe the good creational boundaries that he has set. Things like Sabbath, which dictate our use of time, work, and relationships, for instance. Self-control is submission to the Lordship of Christ. It is a steadfast keeping of the creational boundaries that he, the King, has given, such that we can fully enjoy, work, and play as creatures within his creation and enable others to do the same. This kind of self-control is self-surrendering, self-giving, and as an act of love for God received from God, it is also an act that continually points back, not to our own control or achievements, but to the gracious rule and provision of the true King, Jesus Christ. So, as you journey on, Go with the blessing of this King. Grace and peace to you many times over as you deepen in your experience with God and Jesus our Master. 
grow in grace and understanding of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. And glory be to the Master, now and forever. Amen.